Welcome back to the course corrosion failures and analysis. Today we have lecture 21 and we will continue our discussion on intergranular corrosion. And if you see uh, the last lecture we realized that uh, the chromium carbide precipitation along the grain boundary and then subsequent chromium depletion zone along the grain boundary which is adjacent to the grain boundary that region becomes highly anodic because its chromium content goes down to even less down less than 2 percent which is in weight percent of course but rest of the part of the uh, alloy or the soft alloy surface contains 18 percent chromium which is sufficient for passivation to take place so that become passive stainless steel at the same time along the grain boundary you have all those network of chromium carbide which is here 23 C 6 kind of chromium carbide. So, they will also get passivated. So, the narrow zone which is the depleted in chromium which is the basically depleted in chromium that becomes anode and that anode is highly a narrow region and surrounded by a large cathodic regions because passivated SS or the passivated stainless steel would be noble as compared to the uh, those active stainless steel part. So, the course is lecture 21 topic intergranular corrosion. Now, as we have discussed in the last lecture, we took one microstructure of austenitic stainless steel which is 188 and then we saw along the grain boundary we have chromium carbide precipitation and it forms a network and this narrow zone, this zone basically are actually depleted with chromium and that creates a section which is highly anodic because 12 percent chromium is needed for sufficient passivation to achieve. So, the 12 percent chromium should be required in order to make it stainless steel okay, or stainless. Now, around this zone which is huge area of the grain that contains the hair we contain 18 percent chromium. So, they will passive it, but even the narrow zone of grain boundary it is C R 23 C 6. So, passive it sufficient chromium for passivation to take place, but this zone which is the depleted zone where chromium is less than 2 percent will be active, it will not passive it. Now, as per galvanic series, if you go back to the galvanic corrosion, galvanic series in salt solution, NaCl solution or seawater. Uh, passivated 304 stainless steel is sitting at a very high level in the galvanic series as compared to the active 304 stainless steel. So, that means, this zone will act as cathode 
and this one will also act as cathode and the narrow section which is anode. So, now there will be galvanic effect. So, this lead to so these two and this one they will have strong galvanic effect since these are lying further apart in that galvanic series. So, this is cathode and this is anode that is what it is taking place. Now, at the same time there is one more effect that is coming into picture area factor since cathode here has large area and anode here which is the depleted zone this blue part is a small area and since it cathode area is large. So, the cathodic reactions have more area and that is what larger number of cathodic reaction would take place which require electron and that electron would be supplied by this narrow anodic region and that is what the dissolution of this zone will take place aggressively. aggressively and it leads to intergranular corrosion in stainless steel. Now, coming to this particular phenomena that precipitation of C R 23 C 6 kind of precipitate along the grain boundary. So, that process we call it as when this happens then only this depletion happens along the grain boundary adjacent to the grain boundary actually that blue region. So, that time we call that the steel has become sensitized, sensitized steel and this process is called sensitization. Now, for this sensitization we need precipitation of this particular phase which is actually a nucleation and growth controlled fine. And whenever it happens that means, it is basically temperature and time dependent fine. So, if something is temperature and time dependent that means, for this sensitization to happen we have two factors for sensitization. One temperature and this is more or less universally proven that in case of 188 stainless steel which is and rather most of the stainless steels uh, where this 188 close to that 188 ratio is maintained. So, there we have that particular temperature zone where chromium carbide precipitation is enhanced. So, that is around 500 to 850 degree Celsius. So, this temperature can vary uh, from either side. Okay. So, it can also reach to around 900 degree Celsius, but this is a kind of uh, general range where this precipitation happens. And this precipitation temperature also depends on function of carbon content as well as chromium content. Why? Because for this phase to form you need both chromium and carbon, but chromium you cannot reduce because chromium is in the range of 
17 to 18 to 20 percent. Okay. So, this is 18 to 20 percent. So, this is essential because that chromium actually gives you the stainless property. Hence, uh, that carbon is becoming important because chromium is fixed, this is fixed, this is fixed. So, the carbon is can be varied, can be varied mainly if we have higher carbon. So, then of course, chromium carbide precipitation would become easier because it has much more solute content for the precipitation to for the accumulation of carbon and get this particular to come out as a this particular precipitate. But if carbon content decreases of course, that precipitation kinetics slows down. Okay. So, so that means second part of course, temp, uh, this is that means if it is dependent on temperature and it is a nucleation for process and at the same time one more important factor is why it in why it finds a place along the grain boundary because grain boundary provides heterogeneous nucleation sites that is what it actually tries to form on grain boundary. So, I uh, will come to that part, but here this is one part and then second part is time more would be the time within this temperature zone higher would be possibility of formation of chromium carbide because it is a time dependent temperature as well as time rate because for that you need diffusion, diffusion of both carbon and chromium fine. So, since it needs diffusion, it is a diffusion is a time dependent process. So, that is what time is important. Now, as I said that more would be the time spent by that particular metal within this temperature zone higher would be the chance of formation of chromium carbide. Now, third factor which actually uh, becomes important in the case of uh, stainless steel, since we see that the chromium cannot be changed which is the fixed content. If chromium you reduce, chromium carbide formation will be reduced, but that we do not want. So, the carbon can only be controlled. So, you can say the corollary uh, may be a third uh, factor which controls sensitization is the carbon content, provided there is no uh, stabilizing element. So, just at this moment that there are elements like titanium or niobium, they try to stabilize stainless steel. So, we will talk about that addition of niobium and titanium into the stainless steel for making it stabilized. So, that is a falling under control of sensitization, but at this moment we have these three factors. Now, first we will talk about this two part, these two part will be important. Now, this particular temperature zone we call it sensitization zone. sensitization zone or sensitization temperature zone, temperature zone. Now, this kind of sensitization is possible as you understand from this discussion that if the steel somehow is taken to that temperature range and we leave it there for some time. Now, question is if some stainless steel is made and then if it is rapidly quenched to the room temperature, then of course, the time spent within this temperature would be very small. And if that time spent is less than the time required for the sufficient precipitation of chromium carbide along the grain boundary, definitely the problem of sensitization would not happen. So, that means, if we quench or rapidly cool stainless steel or here the we are talking about 304 SS. So, that would allow less time spent. So, let us say this is T spent. Okay. So, if this T spent is less than the time required for considerable 
CUR carbide precipitation, chromium carbide precipitation. Of course, due, due to rapidly cooling, when it cools from a higher temperature, within this temperature range, the time spent is T spent and that is less than the time required for considerable carb chromium carbide precipitation. And then by the time it drops to room temperature, no problem of sensitization. Sensitization will not be absorbed. But if this time is more than this, so that case, this is the case. So, this is the case where you get sensitization. Fine. So, this problem is not there, but question is if you have to have a component made a kind component made out of stainless steel of this particular grade of stainless steel, you need to have welding okay, that is joining operation. So, the welding is needed and during welding of course, you have two parts this is one part and the another part is this is another part. So, now here you are doing welding. So, the welding is done, welding is done. So, that is basically the metal pull and now here we have large heat and the maximum temperature, max temperature because there only we are putting that beam if we do electric arc welding that electric arc is held over there. So, that is what that will be the highest temperature. Now, this heat will be dissipated and this dissipation would also happen through conduction. So, the heat is going either side. So, the base of that particular both the sides will also be heated up. An interesting observation is if this, this heating is somewhat not very fast, we get to see a region which is close to that particular whirlpool, but little away from that whirlpool in both the sides. Both the sides we have a zone which is forming, see this zone will be susceptible to intergranular corrosion. So, the, this green zone, this part and this part are basically susceptible sensitization. And since it is taking place due to the welding operation, we call it weld decay. The sensitized part both the sides of that weld of 304 SS is called weld decay. Now, we have to understand why it happens and it have it is very normal that it can happen if we weld 304 SS which contains this is very important which contains 0 0.08 weight percent carbon and 18.8 this is still 18.8 18 percent chromium and 8 percent nickel and this structure is single phase austenitic okay gamma iron is basically a gamma iron okay now why it happens because if we try to see in two dimension, how much time I have? Well, 
हो जाएगा नाउ इफ वी सी इट इन टू डायमेंशन सो नाउ लेट से दिस इज वन पार्ट दिस इज अनदर पार्ट दिज आर द टू पार्ट ऑफ दैट सेम स्टील कॉम्पोनेंट फेज ऑफ फोर एटीन एट स्टेनलेस स्टील नाउ दिस इज द वेल्ड जोन दिस इज द वेल्ड पार्ट so this is the weld pool and now if we put thermocouple here so that means this weld pool will spread some distance here both the sides because the base metal needs to be melted also okay so then only you can have a very good union now if we put thermocouple at the junction point of the weld pool and the base metal and then at a particular a regular distance let us put another thermocouple here another thermocouple here another thermocouple here so this thermocouple will try to measure the heat received and that heat received will lead to a temperature so actually this thermocouple will measure the temperature at that those points now this let's name those thermocouple a let's say this is a part this is b this is c this is d and we can have temperature time profile of those thermocouple and of course the center part which is actually getting those beam this is the beam part beam part so that center part will be the maximum temperature but away from it the temperature profile the maximum temperature would definitely decrease because heat is actually getting dissipated by conduction through the metal now if we try to look at the time temperature profile let's say this is my temperature axis and this is my time axis and let's say let me just see what happens and the temperatures are basically let's say this is uh 1300 uh let's say this is 1100 900 700 300 like that way it goes up to room temperature so let's say this is room temperature fine now from here heating is done since the heating stage it will be very steep because you are actually having that beam close to that particular weld pool so heating stage it will be very steep fine and since it's away from the melt zone so it cannot reach to the and it let's say degree celsius okay cannot reach to the melting point of that particular metal fine if it is little away from that particular melt zone now when you cool let's say you remove the beam so it will rapidly cool because it was arc welding arc welding is employed we'll discuss why in stainless steel welding we never use gas welding okay so the arc welding so the heating so the cooling would be sluggish because it's a basically uh, in normal air it is left so it's a normal uh, the way it actually goes for a normal cooling so the cooling curve would be somewhat like this okay now then at the b point also we can plot fine 
Now the C part, C thermocouple also can you can draw. And the D part, D thermocouple can show you and for example, this though I have taken it to downwards, so, so actually it is starting here, fine. So, now D part, okay. so these are the temperature profile, fine and let us say this is in second. Now, as we see that the sensitization temperature range is around 500 to 900, let us say 850 degrees Celsius. Okay. So, let us put a boundary there. So, this is let us say 850, this is the 850 and 500 is this one. Okay. Now, let us see how much time a particular thermocouple is staying within that particular magic temperature range where this sensitization or chromium carbide precipitation would happen. Now, if we consider the A part, so this is corresponding to A thermocouple, this is corresponding to B thermocouple, this is corresponding to C and this is corresponding to D thermocouple. Now, in case of D, of course, that particular position of that particular metal is not able to reach to 500 even, it stops there at around 300 or 250 or 280. So, since it is not able to reach to that 500 more than 500, it will never experience this particular temperature zone okay, in case of D. So, D will not experience sensitization since this is not reaching to that level of temperature. Now, in case of C, yes, if you see that it is entering the that particular temperature at this point and leaving that particular temperature at this point. So, the total time spent within that 500 to 850 degrees Celsius temperature is this much. So, I would put T C. Now, in case of B, if we see how much time it spends when it uh, actually uh, heated and going back to the room temperature during, during cooling. So, during heating it leaves this magic temperature at this point, it leaves it and it reaches around 1100 degree Celsius and interestingly chromium carbide type of precipitate dissolve at around 1050 degree Celsius, 50 degree Celsius. So, even if enters this particular magic temperature at this point and leaves at this point, during that time the time of spent at this level would be very small because it is a heating stage and heating is very quick. So, though the time of residence in that temperature range during heating is less, even if we consider that there is a possibility of little bit of chromium carbide precipitation, still it will not stay there along the grain boundary because by the time it leaves here and it reaches to around 1100 degree Celsius temperature, it will dissolve. So, again if it dissolves, then the chromium and carbon will homogenize again and remember for getting a very good stainless property all across the mass or the body of that particular stainless steel, we need to have homogenized chromium and homogenized carbon all across it and it will homogenize. So, there will be no problem uh, when we heat it, but when we cool it in the case of B, it enters this particular temperature here 850 to 500 and leaves here. Okay. 
So, that means, the time of retention during cooling is this much. So, this is the time. So, if I try to see, so this is the time, this is the time. So, which is I can say time corresponding to D. Now, during cooling we have a possibility of chromium carbide precipitation again along the grain boundary, because the grain boundary provides heterogeneous sites. Now, this time we have to analyze okay, whether this time is sufficiently large for the chromium carbide precipitation or not. Now, if I try to see a point, a, a point corresponding to the thermocouple A, so that point similar analogy during heating is can be given just like we have talked about in case of B the time of retention and it also time of retention is less during heating in that temperature range. At the same time the temperature goes beyond 1300 degree Celsius. So, even if there is a little bit of formation possibility, but those chromium carbide will dissolve because it dissolves at around 1050 degree Celsius. Now, during heating we have to again see where it enters. So, during heating it enters here and leaves here. Okay that A point corresponding to A point. So, the time of retention in that temperature range is this much. So, this is T A. Now, from this picture it is very clear that you see that T A T A is less than T B is less than T C. So, here this temperature relation is very important. Now, if we consider that the time required for significant chromium carbide precipitation, okay, if this time is more than T A, but if this time is is less than T B and T C, then you can easily make out that when we have at that point of A, the time of retention is not able to give sufficient chromium carbide precipitation, because that time of retention is more less than the time formation for sufficient chromium carbide precipitation. But in case of B and C, we could see that the time required for precipitation of chromium carbide is less than T B and T C. So, we have more time for the formation of chromium carbide in case of B and C. So, in this zone around this zone, so it so you can have to you have to also put close by thermocouple and then see. So, where is actually are just touching this place and where it is just touching this place. So, in that case B will have precipitation C will not have because C it is not going to the uh, uh, that particular temperature range, but the B will have a sufficient time. So, that case only that around the B will have precipitation. So, now in this particular situation whatever uh, diagram we have plotted. So, around this zone, around this zone we have chromium carbide precipitation. So, this zone becomes sensitized fine because of this condition. And similarly, on the other side, you can also do the mirror experiment, okay, similar experiment, and you will see that the similarly on the other side, if the both the stainless steels are same of same 304, normal 304, so that time this one also will have this temperature profile like this. So, where chromium carbide precipitation can be possible. So, here Cr23 C6 forms and it becomes sensitized. So, this is a typical phenomena that is observed during welding. So, that is what it is called decay, weld decay. Okay. So, this is called weld decay. Fine. So, now let us stop here. We will take this matter further in our next lecture. Thank you.